Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. Would you join us as we sing? I was buried beneath my shame. Who could care? Till I met you in the community. We're so glad that you've joined us here today. When God moves in, the, in a community, this is what it looks like. We're so glad that you've been patient with getting in here and finding a seat. We're so glad that you've joined us uh, here this morning to worship the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. What an awesome day. <clears throat> 
Whether you've uh, joined us here in person or whether you've joined us online, we would love to care for you in some way. We, uh, we are here for you. If, if there's something we can do, uh, if you have a question about anything or if you have a burden on your heart today, you'd just like someone to pray for you, just to, to, lift, to lift your life up to God in prayer. We've got people standing by with lanyards on. They'd love to do that. Just grab them. If it's busy in here, they've got time. Uh, just grab somebody that uh, has, has their name hanging around their neck and they would love to pray with you. If you're watching online, we have somebody standing by monitoring our Facebook and YouTube live streams as well. And uh, if you have a prayer request, they'd love to, to pray for you there. You can put your prayer request in the comment section there and they will uh, we'll get back with you. Um, and also, if we would love to get a Bible into the hands and we'd like to get God's word into the hands of his people, we have Bibles on the back counter there. You're free to take one on the way out or if you need one during the, during the service today, they're free. There's no strings attached. You can grab one and, and use it today and take it with you. And if you're watching online, you can actually text the word gospel to 97,000. Uh, text the word gospel to 97,000. You'll get a quick link back. We're not soliciting anything from you. We're not asking for money. We won't bother you a whole bunch. You're just gonna get one link back and you'll click on that link and it'll take you to some resources. We'll send you a free Bible on our, at our expense if you'd like one, answer any questions for you uh, as well. We'd love to care for you. So glad to be here. I'm so pumped for the, for the, to worship together with you guys today. But before we get started, if you'll join me in just a few moments of prayer. Dear Father God, we are thankful for this moment, whatever moment that might be for a man or woman, a child, a husband, a wife, someone sitting here today or listening, Lord, the moment that you have brought them into this room or maybe they stumbled across a live stream somewhere. We're thankful, Lord. Thankful for every moment that you give us. Thankful for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for the, all the blessings that uh, surround us, the innumerable ways that you have cared for each and every one of us that we don't even realize, that we may never know, we may never even understand, that you've protected us and guided us. The Bible says that uh, a righteous and holy Father in heaven looked down upon his creation, the creation that he loved, his people created in his, his image, and they saw, he saw the brokenness of, of our sin sin that enters all of our lives. We are all broken in some way. We all suffer from an infection. Sin is in the world and it is in each man and woman's heart. God loved us so much. He had a plan of redemption for each and every one of us. He had a plan. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, his son to die on a cross. He would be drugged to the cross, that he would be beaten, he would be whipped, he would be nailed to a cross, that his blood and his body would be the debt that we owe, that would wash us clean of our sins, that if we would believe upon his name, confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that the Father in heaven raised him from the dead, that we will be saved. Saved from the wrath of God's saved from the wrath of God and one day to join him in heaven. We are thankful for this plan, Lord, and that you have put it into action through your son, Jesus Christ. And today, as we celebrate and remember what he has done, I ask that you would allow each man and woman and child here to feel your presence, to hear directly from you, to stir their hearts. We're thankful, Lord, as we worship you. We're thankful for all you are and how you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you join us as we continue to worship together? Guilty, I'm guilty, is all that I could say. Mercy. Your mercy crashed in like a wave, and all my sin was washed away, washed away. You took them all, there's not a trace, I stand here free with every stain. Forever wash away Spotless, spotless Whiter than the snow Your blood, oh your blood Covers me, I'm whole 
given us all our wrongdoings, having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Sing this with me. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him thank you jesus one final breath one final breath he gave his heaven Son of 
God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus, and He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my sin. seat this morning. God bless you. Happy Easter to you, everybody. 
Welcome, whether you are in this room, packed in here somewhere, or whether you're watching out there online, we are thrilled to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. Wherever you're coming from, wherever you're watching from, whatever you may believe, whatever you're going through, whatever you might carry on your heart and on your life this morning, uh, we are glad that God has, by his providence, crossed your path with ours. Uh, we believe the Lord knows who you are. He knows, the Bible says, the number of the hairs on your head, the number of the days of your life before there was yet one of them. He knows everything you're going through. He knows your name, your family, your circumstances. Even if we have no idea, God knows, and he knew you'd be here right now. And we're praying that he would speak specifically to your life. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy, when we believe in him, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Might be somebody here today, you need a, a new hope, a living hope. You say, man, I'm out of hope. Struggling to hang on. The world offers us hope, but they can't deliver. They always tell us it's going to be in the next thing, the next dollar, the next possession, the next experience, the next form of entertainment, next adventure or relationship. We come to it, the end of it all, and it's a dead hope. It's a dead end. The Bible says when Jesus rose from the dead, he proved to be a living hope, eternally alive from the grave, having the power of the resurrection and the life. And he said, everyone who lives and believes in me will live, even if they die. How do we have this living hope? How do we gain this eternal life? There might be somebody here with some questions on your soul this morning, watching somewhere. I hope so. The Bible says, the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, in the sixth chapter, talked about people's lives and souls. And he said, everyone in verse 47 who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them or responds to them, he said, I'll show you whom he or she is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood occurred and the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground. Matthew's gospel says on the sand without any foundation and the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. The ruin of that house was great. I wonder what your life is built on today. Everybody here has a foundation under their, their life and their soul of some kind. Everybody, me, you, everybody you know. Jesus encountered many people in the New Testament whose lives were built on things other than the rock. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians that the rock is Christ. He is immovable and eternal in the heavens. Cannot be shaken washed away, defeated or destroyed, did not undergo decay. Everything else is sand. Jesus came across that woman in the Gospel of John. She built her life on the hope of a great relationship that never came. Had broken relationship after broken relationship. Somebody today, you feel the brokenness of people letting you down. Somebody left family let you down. Somebody said they'd be there and they weren't. Jesus met her that day and her sorrow and despair changed her life, changed her foundation to the rock that could never be moved again. Jesus came to a man, rich man, had many possessions, came running up to Jesus and he was a moral man. He was a good man by society's standards. Probably a good neighbor to somebody. Kind person. 
And he asked Jesus a question. People still have the question now. He said, what am I still lacking? Because he knew something was missing. He said, man, I have, I have this stuff. I have people. I have reputation, good reputation. He said, what, what am I still lacking? And what he was lacking is true surrender to the one who is the rock, the firm foundation, the resurrection and the life. He didn't have that. And he knew it. Something in his soul called for it. Our soul calls for it to be reunited with the one who breathed into us the breath of life and made us a living soul. We feel that fracture, even though sometimes we can't put words on it or fully understand it. And we always try to heal it by our own power. We try to fill the void with everything we can find and hope that that yearning, that longing ache will go away. And that man had it. He said, what am I still lacking? Somebody today, you say, oh, man, I just can't figure it out. I don't feel truly happy. I don't feel at rest. I see people in their eyes and their face and they seem at rest in their spirit. They seem totally secure in something. And I don't feel like I have that, but I can't figure it out. And you ask along with that man, what am I still lacking? A man named Nicodemus, he had religion, but he had no redeemer. A lot of people, they have religion on the outside. From the outside, he looked like a man of God. Many people from the outside, they look like a man or a woman of God who fears the Lord and honors his name. But something was lacking in him too. And the Bible says he went looking for Jesus at night. Probably couldn't sleep. Had no peace. I hear people say sometimes, Wes, I just can't sleep. My thoughts are louder than anything in my life. My mind screams. My soul is restless. And I can't sleep at night. Nicodemus, he couldn't sleep, and he had all the religion on the outside. The Bible talks about people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. That's who he was. They have a form of godliness. But they deny the power, the power of repentance, turning from sin, the power of God's grace and his mercy and his true salvation, the power of his word and obedience to it, humility and surrender. They deny the power. They have the appearance of godliness, but inside there is no true life. And Jesus found him that night wandering through town. He knew where he would be. Even before Nicodemus was born, Jesus knew that would happen that day. As you know, he, he knew you'd be here now. If you're watching somewhere, he knew you'd be there right now. We did not. No man, no human power could ever orchestrate such a thing. But the God who made you, who knows the longing of your heart, Whatever your foundation is, he knew you'd be here right now. He found Nicodemus. And he said, Nicodemus, unless a person is born again, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's what kept him up at night. That's what disturbed his spirit, whether he knew it before then or not. He had not been born again. And Nicodemus asked a question many people have. How can a man be born again a, a second time? And Jesus said, I'm talking about spiritually. So we are all born of water. We are all born in the physical. But he said, you need to be born in the spiritual. People are alive on the outside, but they're dead on the inside. Nicodemus was dead inside. Jesus told him he could have eternal life. We see a change in Nicodemus later on. Maybe there'll be a change in somebody right now. You say, that's me. I feel numb inside. I, I'm alive. My heart beats. My lungs work. I can see. I can understand. But I feel like a corpse that walks around. I, I have no real life. Said everyone. Who's it for? He said, everyone who comes to me. I love that word, everyone. Everyone. You know, he told Nicodemus, for whosoever 
believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever, everyone. You know, the Bible says in Romans, all who call upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Saved from their past and their regrets and their shame and their guilt and their sorrow and bitterness and rage. Loneliness saved. Fear and terror saved. Everyone. I need that word. Questions come. Well, you don't know what I've done, people say. And they want that peace. They want that salvation, somebody now. But you say, man, if you only knew, people say that sometimes. I understand. You say, no, you don't. You don't know what I've done. Things unspeakable, but you can't undo it now. You don't know who I've hurt. You don't know the words that I've said, the thoughts that I've had, the places that I've gone, and the stuff that I have done. You have no idea the darkness of my life. Some people, they say, if I could go back, I would do it different, but you can't. And what do they wonder? They wonder, could a God who is righteous, who is holy, who is just, could a God love a person as wicked and corrupted, stained as me? And he says, everyone who comes to me, all who call, he already knew. He knows things about you that you forgot about. You know what the Bible says? He says he has taken that record, that hostile decree, The Bible says in the book of Colossians, that hostile decree against you. It's the record of your whole life. Everything you've done, thought, said, and it is hostile to you. It is condemning to you. And he said he took that in his body on the cross. He said he has taken it out of the way, off of your soul, having nailed it to the cross and traded you his righteousness. Who's that for? Everyone. Everyone. The worst person here, the worst person you've ever known or could imagine. God's grace is boundless, limitless. Everyone who comes to me, what does he say? And hears my words. What are his words? So in the Gospel of Mark, repent. That means to turn, to let go, to surrender said to turn, repent, he said, and believe in the gospel. We let go of our idolatry. Just by faith, we let go. We release the grip in our soul of our lust and our pride and our self-centeredness. We let it all go. His words, repent and believe in the gospel. Gospel means good news, that I can be made a new creation, transformed by the renewing of my mind but I can't do it by my will or by effort or by some religious tradition or a certain day. It has to be a miracle of the Holy Spirit of the living God. And Jesus said, come to me by faith and I do that work in you. He said, everyone who hears my words, come unto me, he said, all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest, rest for your soul. Somebody today, you say, man, on the outside, I put on a good show. But inside, I'm weary, I'm exhausted, and I'm heavy laden. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me by faith, and I will give you rest for your soul. There's no better kind. How does that happen? He said, you hear my words, and you act on them. Many people, they hear the words of Jesus, they will hear them now. But they don't act, they don't respond, they don't come by faith, they don't surrender, they don't call unto the Lord to be saved. The young man who was rich with many possessions, but he said, what am I lacking? Jesus told him the answer. He said, let all that stuff go, man. All the things that cannot hear, see, speak, or save that you've turned to that have left you empty, asking this question of me now, let it all go and come to me. And the man wouldn't do it. He heard the words of Jesus, but he did not act on them. I wonder what you will do. Said the one who acts, the one who responds and calls and comes by faith. Said in verse 48, he's like a man or a person building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. 
A lot of people, they live on the surface in life. You only get surface conversations, surface topics. How's the weather? Did you see the sports game? You know, price of gas. Just surface. Because if they dig deep, they'll see themselves. Some people are scared to death of that. They dig through all those things that happened in their life. Some that they did on their own. Some that were done to them that were not their fault. Dig deep. Who am I, Lord? Who am I really? Am I truly at rest? Am I truly at peace? Do I have real joy? And if not, why not? Dig deep through the hurt. Through all the regret. All those bad decisions. Dig deep. Said the one who hears me and responds, they dig deep to the core of their being. He said, laid a foundation. We do it by faith on the rock who is Jesus. And it changes the very character, the soul of who they are. The Bible says it makes us a new creation. Some people say, I wish I could have a different life. You can. It has to be a miracle of God. He said, when that person, when a flood occurred and a torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Everybody faces a storm sooner or later. We don't want to admit it. That's why a lot of people just live on the surface, keeping themselves entertained and distracted and busy. So they don't have to think about what reality is, that there's a storm somewhere. And you notice no matter what foundation a Life is built on a storm, slams against that house, slams in the doctor's office. That torrent bursts when you answer that phone call onto your life. Didn't see it coming, but it slammed into your house in tragedy and trial and struggle and illness and age and bankruptcy. Slams in the police car, in the courtroom. The Bible says that when we are founded on the rock, yes, the storms come, but we are not shaken. We are not shaken. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, it says, he brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, the slippery mud of this life, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. Put a new song in my mouth and a song of praise to our God. What is the song of your life? Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. It's gonna happen. He said, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Praise the Lord. Bible says in verse 49, but the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly. Many people have heard, but they have not responded. Again, I wonder what you will do today. It's like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation, the sand. The torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great. You know, from the roadside, you can't tell whether or not a house is built on a firm foundation. It takes the wind takes the storm, the torrent, before you really know. A lot of people you can't tell, we all look the same here today. Some lives are built on the foundation that is immovable, who is the person of Jesus Christ. You can go back at a moment in your life, you trusted him by faith, and your life and your eternal destiny was changed forever, and you're on the rock, and storms come, and they're tough, and they're, it's a battle, and there's sorrow in your soul, and struggle in your heart, but you are not shaken. There are other people here that look like those people, but they have yet to truly come to Christ like Nicodemus, and they're just a house on the ground. And you can't tell from the outside, but God knows what's true on the inside. These are the ones who've heard the words of Jesus, but they have not acted. What will you do today? God is calling. God is beckoning to your heart. Spirit of God may be speaking. If so, you already know. Might be a teenager here. God is talking to you and you've tried to live in two worlds. It's not working. 
Might be a marriage here that needs to be raised from the dead. You've tried every therapy and every bit of advice and every book that is sold and it hasn't worked and you need to come to Christ for a miracle to breathe life into that marriage and he can. A whole household, a whole family can be changed, but it's the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit that can do it. Found your family, found your soul on the rock. I want to ask you this morning just to take a moment just to bow your head wherever you are, if you would, please. Just reflect on what the Spirit of God might be calling to you. Somebody here, somebody watching or listening somewhere in a hotel room, a living room, driving down the highway, God is calling. What will you do? You hear his still, small voice speak into your heart. You say, man, I, gotta, I need to take care of this. The Bible says, call unto the Lord to be saved. There's no ritual. There's no magic words. You say, well, what do I do? What do I tell him? You tell him the truth. If you've never prayed a word in your life, you tell him the truth. God, I hear you. There are things I don't understand, Lord, but I cannot deny that I hear you speaking and calling to my soul right now. Tell him. Tell him you believe. I believe that Jesus died for my sin and that he rose from the dead. Confess it to him right now. Ask him to cleanse your life and your heart and your conscience from the dead works of sin. Cleanse me, Lord. Forgive me. Ask him to make you a new creation. That's what he promised to do. Ask him. Lord, by your power, please make me a new creation in Christ Jesus today. Renew my mind, renew my spirit. Place my life eternally on the rock. Now and forevermore, ask the Lord to save you. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now and I pray for somebody coming to you by faith. Somebody sitting in this room. Somebody watching on TV somewhere. Somebody listening. You have called to them. I pray, God, that now would be the accepting time. Today would be the day of salvation for somebody. Quiet the distractions of their mind, of the world, of insecurity, fear. Take it all away, Lord, and set their mind on things above, not on things on earth. Rush into their soul, Lord, by the power of your spirit, cleansing them of all unrighteousness raising them to walk in newness of life by the power of Jesus, the lamb without blemish or spot. And write their name in the lamb's book of life. Save somebody, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, if God spoke to your heart and you have settled it with Jesus here today, we'd love to help you. you say, man, something just happened to me. Something changed. I don't understand it all. I'm, I'm shook to the core, and I don't know, where do I go from here? We'd love to help you with some of those questions that are probably beginning to form. And we want to point you only to the scripture to show you what it means to follow Christ. So if that's you, whether you're in here, or you're out there watching somewhere, we'll give you a free resource. We're not, we're not looking to take any money. We're not trying to do anything like that. We need a, if you need us to mail you a Bible now, man, I want to know what the Bible says about whatever this is. We'd love to do all of that, and we'll pay for anything that we need to mail or give to you. Just take out your phone and text the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, to 97,000. 
whether you're here or out there in the world somewhere, gospel to 97,000 and we'll help you. And we'll point you to the scripture and what it means to be a Christ follower, what newness of life looks like. Again, gospel to 97,000. For those in the room here this morning, I wanna tell you the Bible, when people would come to faith in Jesus, there were many times when they would boldly declare it, their new life in Christ. Now listen, you are saved by faith, not of works, not of any traditions or any earthly effort. You are saved by surrendering by faith. But the people in the Bible said it, and they said it one way, in the waters of baptism. And that's what it means. When you go under the water and come out, it means I have believed in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, having saved me from my sin. Again, your faith in that is what does that. The baptism declares that. And maybe God is calling to somebody now. Maybe you just now believed in Jesus, young, old, but he's calling you. We're gonna offer that right now. We have clothes to change into if you need them. We have towels. We have people to answer questions or help you. And we have a baptismal at both sides of the stage. I'm gonna invite everybody to stand right now if you would. We're gonna sing for just a moment. And if God's calling you to be baptized, you just come. Come to either side, either of those signs that say baptism and we'll help you from there. You wanna bring somebody with you. Just, hey man, will you walk with me? Bring somebody with you. If you're carrying a baby, but God's talking to you, what do I do with this baby? We got people back there. We got some nice ladies back there to hold that sweet baby. And you can follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit in the area of baptism. Whoever it might be, you come right now. All to Jesus I surrender all to him. standing there I know the feeling man the heart pounds your anxiety's rising your adrenaline is pumping had a young guy 21 years old or something last night he said man when you said that heart pounding thing he goes I couldn't believe it that's exactly what was happening to me he goes I knew God was calling me but I was just fighting back and forth and you know what he did he just stepped out and came so if you need to come, you just come to either side, to the sign that says baptism. If, I, if the Lord just called you and you say, man, that's me, I'm wrestling. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. Don't worry about a big crowd. Set your heart on things above. And if you need to come and be baptized and proclaim your faith in Jesus, just step out and come. You wanna bring somebody again, just say, hey, come with me. Come right now, either side, and we'll help you.
Hey, listen, uh, there's a lot of people coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's a lot of people coming to be baptized. Um, we, we, you know, we didn't plan any of it. We're just grateful. So I want to say this to you. If, if you need to be somewhere, I want to respect the fact that it is Easter Sunday and you may have made some plans and you, you know, you're, you're grateful for everything, but you do need to go. You're not disrespecting anybody, but we are going to continue to celebrate this as long as the Lord wants to work. Um, so yeah, uh, it, if you need to come and you still need to be baptized, I would invite you to come now. If you just want to sit and, and just be a part of it, you're welcome to sit down, everybody. But if the rest of you, if anybody has to go, feel free to go. God bless you, everybody. Happy Easter. We're going to keep going here.